Hey folks, so I just want to walk through the, um, I want to give you a little bit more background on our communication pathways and sort of do a summary overview of all the communication pathways that you are going to encounter just to try and um, level out some of the noise in this arena. These communication pathways are really loud. So there's three things that we're going to talk about in this little clip. First of all, I want to talk about the general pattern that we see in all communication pathways. And hopefully all of this will be review because of your grand anatomy background. After we establish the general pattern for communication pathways, then I want to specifically go into a neural pathway and the anatomy of a neural pathway. I want to start with the neural pathway because I think it's more intuitive and I think we spend more time on that in anatomy in comparison to the endocrine pathway. I would argue we're going to spend a great deal of time on endocrine type pathways in physio. So the fact that it's a little less familiar, maybe a little less comfortable is fine with me because we're going to get lots of practice with it. So we will wrap up with looking at the specific characteristics of an endocrine pathway and how it's similar to a neural pathway and how what characters are um, very distinct. So we're going to, of course, in rig style, we're going to draw ourselves some pictures and I'm going to put it all on one page. So let's start with the the like the general pattern for communication pathways. And they all start the same way, right? They all start with a stimulus. And I can't think of a stimulus without putting a little star around it because in my head, that's action. And the pathway has to have something, something has to initiate the process and that's the stimulus. Something has to be the point of the process, and that is the response. I'm drawing the stimulus and the response in the same way because they're similarly non-anatomical things. They're, they're actions. A stimulus is an action that causes this pathway, and the response is the action that's the outcome of the pathway. Does that make sense? So the stimulus in order, and this is like such a physio concept, in order for the stimulus to be real, you have to have something that can hear it, can pick it up, can read it, and that's your sensor. So all of these have, um, I'm trying to remember what color I was gonna do for these. All of these pathways have a sensor. And I'm picking blue for my sensory things. And the sensor has some sort of capacity to read the stimulus. And reading the stimulus is not like, I perceive the stimulus out there. It's actually a physiological thing. There are physiological changes that happen that allow the stimulus, whatever it is, to activate the sensor. Those physiological processes, oh, that's what we are studying this whole semester. That's what we're doing. So the sensor then proceeds to generate an input message. Think about that. Stimulus caused something to happen. The sensor picked it up and then the sensor generates an input message. What does that input message look like? Well, that's another topic of physio. That's a cellular mechanism that we will look at. We will explore all the little molecules and all the channels that are opening and closing that allow for the creation of, or the propagation of that input message. That input message is going to travel to an integrator. Mm 
Now, the integrator takes that input message and says, hmm, you're telling me, hey, that sensor over there is telling me that this is happening. I think we should do something about that. And the integrator is going to generate an output message that travels to whom? To a target. And I'm choosing this word very carefully. The target, the target is gonna do something. The target receives that output message from the integrator and says, I hear you, I'm in, I will take care of business for you. And the target facilitates a response. The response then is in play. Now, we've talked about um, feedback loops. If the response decreases the stimulus, that's a negative feedback loop. If the response increases the stimulus, that's a positive feedback loop. Cool. Feedback loops aren't always there. Awesome. You can still have communication pathways without having a feedback loop. Great. The response is the point of the whole thing. Now, let's do our neural pathway. And on this side, we'll do endocrine. Stimulus is equal in both. In a neural pathway, our sensor is usually a sensory receptor organ. I'm just gonna have to, oh, I don't, I shouldn't say usually. Comfortably, <laughs> we are like, oh, we're familiar with sensory um, receptor organs. Do I need to write that down? Like an eyeball. I'll just draw an eyeball for you. There's a sensory receptor organ. I'm gonna draw your attention to some um, vocabulary that I'm not sure everybody's remembering. And that is somatic sensory and visceral sensory and somatic motor and visceral motor. Those need to be in your back pocket. Somatic sensory um, senses or neurons are things that are associated with the outer tube of your body. So your eyes and your ears and your nose and your skin, that's all somatic sensory um, sensing. Visceral sensory is associated with your inner tube. So it's your guts, your heart, your digestive system, your kidneys. Um, visceral sensory receptors and you have them and that holy cow your visceral sensory receptors are responsible for sensing homeostatic levels three cheers thank you very much for that visceral sensory receptors so you can have these structures sensory organs and they're functioning as the sensor in a neural pathway and they all connect up to a sensory neuron that then sends a message to the integrator. Now, I have to say more words because this sensory neuron can be called an afferent path. And I hope that's familiar to you. The afferent path, remember afferent path takes information toward the central nervous system. The afferent path is going to take information to the integrator. In a fully neural pathway, that integrator is going to be the central nervous system. I was about to say the central nervous system or the spinal cord, but the spinal cord is the central nervous system. The central nervous system is the brain or the spinal cord. And those in a neural pathway, that's your integrator. If I said, hey, what what kind of um, your cerebellum, what role will it play in a communication pathway? You don't have to think about it. You don't have to guess. You don't have to know anything about the pathway. The cerebellum is a brain structure 
it will play the role of an integrator in a communication pathway, period. Let's talk about integrators. They don't do doo-doo. They don't do doo doo do 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 No, they don't do anything. They have to tell someone else to do something. Brain and spinal cord don't do crap. They send a message out through what kind of path? Yes, indeed. I hear you. I hear you. Through an efferent path. They send the message out to, ah, uh, should I say, yes, I think I am going to say, to an effector. The central nervous system sends the order through an efferent path, which is just a neuron or a nerve, and they target the effector. Now, the effector is muscle or exocrine gland. Effectors are muscle or exocrine glands. And effectors are targets. All effectors are targets. Not all targets are effectors. Effectors are targets that are acted on by a neuron. That's the technical um, definition of what an effector is. An effector is part of, it's the doer in a neural pathway. Somatic motor neurons instruct skeletal muscle to do their thing. Visceral motor neurons instruct smooth muscle and cardiac muscle to do their thing. There is a pathway, friends. How do you feel? Oh, I'm so glad you're doing well. All right, this is cool because now we're gonna do the last um, pathway, the endocrine pathway. And you can see them right next to each other. You can see that the effector is the target. The central nervous system is the integrator. We have sensory receptor organs or we have sensory receptors, cells, that are really receiving information. The afferent path is the input message. The efferent path is the output message. It's all clean. Let's see what's going on with the endocrine gland. I'm gonna, oops, wrong color. I'm gonna draw this in a very specific way because this is going to clarify for you the thing that is the most confusing about an endocrine pathway. And what did I tell you about physio? We're gonna be dealing with endocrine pathways most. We're gonna, neural pathways, yes, we're gonna see them. But endocrine pathways, we're gonna be seeing a lot of these weird, different looking pathways. And what did you notice? What did I just do? I just drew a box that, I don't know if you can tell, because if you weren't watching, it's blue on top and purple on the bottom. And that is because in an endocrine pathway, the sensor is the integrator. And the sensor is the integrator is an endocrine gland. So let's put that in here, endocrine cell gland. You know what I mean. Oh, that's I can't read that unless you followed me writing that. So the sensor is the integrator and the, that integrator, that's the endocrine structure. We do not have an afferent path in an endocrine pathway. What this means for you is that the endocrine, like if you think about somehow you have to sense the stimulus. The endocrine gland itself senses the stimulus. I don't know, I kind of feel like I wanna add a little like a little indicator that says, okay, the sensor is going to pick up that stimulus. Like, okay, yeah, we'll just throw some little receptors in here to indicate that we're picking up, we have some sort of physiological capacity to pick up the stimulus. And that actually generates 
a bunch of chemical reactions inside the cell in the endocrine pathway. So the stimulus comes in, activates the endocrine structure. That's, you know, it senses what's going on and it generates its input message inside the cell or inside the gland. So this is kind of the, let's do it there. This is like the input message. It's like it's inside the cell because then the endocrine structure also acts as the integrator and says, hmm, I see that we have received this information. It's been processed inside of me and now I know what I want to do. It's an endocrine structure. So what is it going to do? It's going to do one thing and one thing only. Uh-huh. Oh, good Lord. That is a very odd looking blood vessel, but it is a blood vessel indeed. Dude, we're dumping some chemical. We're going to dump hormones into the blood. That's the blood sillies. And then our target just so happens to have the receptor that can pick that up. How do you feel about that? We always call, okay, no, the hormone is the output message. The output message from an endocrine gland is a hormone. Is it an efferent path? No, it's not because an efferent path is a neuron, but it's an output message. And an efferent path is also an output message. That hormone tells someone else to do something. This is the like mind blowing part of endocrine gland as integrator. Endocrine gland as I'm telling other people what to do because I'm telling them to do something through my hormones. I'm making hormones that will tell them what to do. That way I don't have to deal with it anymore. Okay. I feel like, mm, how did I do? Did I catch everything? I hope so. If I didn't, let's talk. All right, goodbye.